Hello crafty friends, as promised here is a video about things that I will never buy for card making again. Now there are two exceptions to this which I will talk about right out of the gate and the first is that I will buy them if I find them in a charity shop or somewhere for second hand a reasonable price. And the second exception is that if it is a speciality version of the supply that I just can't make myself at home, I will let myself buy those. Right, that's enough introduction. Let's get on with the list. Number one on the list is enamel dots. Now, I love enamel dots. I think it's the hunter gatherer in me that makes me want to buy them, use them, hoard them. But I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to buy any more, with the exceptions that I've already talked about. Because I can make my own or a decent approximation. And I do that by blending some ink or smushing some ink or adding some ink some way. Or you could even use uh, coloured paper patterned paper, whatever you fancy, whatever you've got more of in your stash that you want to get through. So I'll give that a good colour. That is picked raspberry. That's neither here nor there. Then on the back, I take some double-sided sticky. You can use double-sided sticky tape and put several rows on, or you can use a sheet like this. Stick that on, leave the backing on. And then take a cover plate die like this. This was one I got off of Amazon. I'm sure you'll be able to source one from wherever you are in the world. And it's got lots of circles in it. So it makes a great cover plate. You can use the outside of this, but you can also use the circles as enamel dots. So I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. So that's cut through nicely. Some of them stay in there on the backing sheet. Some of them stick in there. But all you need to do is poke out a few. You can poke it out onto your glass mat or whatever you've got and pick them up. Or you can take them out of here, select the ones you want, put them where you want them. And to turn them into enamel dots, I just add glossy accents over the top. There are other products, you don't have to use glossy accents, I think Nouveau do one, it's called Crystal Glaze and there's probably other things out there. Oh, that one's still got its backing on so it's not going to stick. Okay, so yeah, make sure you take the backing off of your circles before you stick them down. And then once these are dry, they look just like enamel dots. If you don't want the drying time and you're not fussed about dimension, take some clear packing tape, tape over it before you cut it, and then when you take your circles out, you should get flat, shiny circles. So if you're looking for shiny, non-dimensional circles to add to your cards, then add some clear packing tape. As well as glossy accents and clear packing tape, you can add, say, a clear glaze that's got some glitter in it and just tap it down a bit so it forms a dome so when that dries you'll get pink glitter and I think the beauty of this is that you can coordinate your enamel dots with the project you're working on by using the same ink so you're not having to pick enamel dots that are sort of close to the colours that you're using you can use the exact colours and you don't have to make these for every project. You could do this with every ink pad that you've got and then store this in a folder or a, a bin and you'd always have them good to go. So the ones that are stuck in here still, you can, if they're sticky, oops, stick them back in there. Now some of these have come out of there with their backing on and you could put these in a little pocket so what have we got here this is a little pocket that some stamps came in i'm sure you can buy these and although i think i probably need to cut this down a bit slimmer you could keep that in there so they don't go wandering off like that and any 
that have still got their backing on in here you can just tuck in and then you've got your own enamel dots and your own coordinating ink colours ready to go. I do like to add Nouveau drops, especially the metallics. I used to have lots and lots of these colours, but um, I passed those on because I just wasn't using them. But I do use the metallic, the white and the black and some glitter ones. And these make great enamel dots too. And again, you can customise them by deciding what size blobs you want. So you can do teeny tiny ones or larger ones. With your Nouveau drops, you can pre-make your enamel dots. If you create them on a piece of plastic, a piece of acetate, I'm not doing a very good at getting circles here. That's because I'm trying to talk and do it at the same time. But if you pop them on a bit of acetate and set them aside somewhere safe to dry, these will be peelable, offable, and you can store these. So if you're short on drying time, have some of these ready made in your stash and you can use those. And these have other uses as well. You can put them through stencils or you can paint with them. So I think these are a pretty versatile uh, alternative to enamel dots, especially when you pair them with something like this. You can uh, go a long way with those. If you can't lay your hands on a large circle die like this, then you could use any die that has circles in it. These are some border dies that I picked up at a charity shop and they've got various size circles in. And before I bought this, I used these. And the reason I chose this over these is just I get more, more dots that way, more quickly. But Use what you have, go through your dies and see what you've got that might cut circles that you can use as enamel dots. Along the same lines are sequins. I don't buy sequins anymore. I actually, I don't have any in my stash at all because I make my own approximation of sequins to use in things like shaker cards. So this is a cover plate die that gives a variety of circles, but they're wonky circles. You don't have to use wonky circles. You could use exactly the same die as you use for your enamel dots, but this is a bit more fun. And I've got some gold foiled cardstock here, which will give me some gold sequins. But I'm also going to add some color to the back. So I've got some metallic paints here. Don't have to use metallic paints. You could use anything you've got to add any kind of colour to the back. You could just ink over the back again. And I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer. It doesn't have to look amazing. So I've got this little bit of gold cardstock and I'm going to put some blue Distress Oxide on the back. It's not going to be shiny or metallic, but that's fine. That's tumbled glass. I'll just give that a quick dry. You do want to be careful heating foiled cardstock because it can cause bubbling under the foil. That's dry now. I'm going to cut that. So that can be kept because that might make a fun background on a card. So there's no waste and you can poke these out or tap them out, whatever's quickest. And there we have a little pile of double sided gold and metallic purple dots in different sizes which would look absolutely lovely in a shaker card you can also use punches to make some i guess it would be confetti rather than sequins but this might be a bit big but it might work in a shaker card so you again you've got double-sided gold on one side tumbled glass on the other you could do any shape leaves butterflies and of course you don't have to color the back if you don't want you could have white on the back or whatever colour it is. I've got this little die here which cuts tiny butterfly shapes which would make great confetti or sequin type things to put in a shaker pocket. So instead of buying sequins, make your own by investing in a few dies and punches that will give you what you want. And again, the advantage is that you can get exactly what you want. You can match the colour you add to the back of your foil or you don't need to use foil you can just colour both sides of your card with ink and again that will match exactly your project. So there we have a lovely little pile 
of homemade confetti slash sequins. Number three on the list of things that I won't ever buy again is coloured embossing powder. So this is all I have in embossing powder. I've got clear, I've got bright detail gold, and these are the two I use most often, hence the fact that I've got a lot of them and I keep them in big tubs. And then I've got an embossing tinsel gold, which is a sparkly gold. This is an antique gold, super fine silver, a detail white, black and copper. So this, this and this I got from a charity shop and these two I think I got from the range. The clear and the gold I ordered from Amazon because that's where I could get big bottles of them. But I no longer buy red or green or pink or any of the other colours because there are two things I can do to make my own as it were. The first thing I can do is I can stamp and heat emboss in any colour I like using my inks. So I'm going to stamp this in picked raspberry. Do that a couple of times to get really good coverage. And then I'm going to stamp again in Versamark. Now you might need a stamping platform unless you're particularly good at being accurate with an acrylic block. So I just stamp that in Versamark. I can do that a couple of times over the top of my Distress Oxides. Now some coloured inks do stay wet enough for you to heat emboss on them, but I think giving a layer of Versamark just takes the hit and miss out of it all. So now I'm going to dip that in clear embossing powder and heat set that, or melt it rather. So there we have a picked raspberry glossy embossed sentiment. So again, the advantage of this is I can coordinate this with the inks I'm using on my project and I'm getting the most out of my inks really. I'm stamping with them and heat embossing with them. So we haven't finished with embossing powders yet. Another way of creating your own embossing powders is to use pigment powders. So your brushes, your luscious powders, your prism pearlescent powders, your mica powders, your Lindy stamp gang powders, whatever powders you might have. And you can mix these powders with clear embossing powder. So I've just taken a blob of, which one was it? Green, green luscious powder and added a spatula of clear embossing powder. Now you could mix these together in a little pot. In fact, where's my little pot? This is one I made earlier. In fact, I think I made it with the green. So I can add this to that. I just mix that around and I will pop it in there just for ease of use. So that's in there, I can pop the lid on, give it a bit of a shake, get it all mixed up. And then I can stamp again a couple of times with embossing ink. Now I can sprinkle this on. Sometimes these pigment powders are so pigmented that they have the potential to stain paper. So just use the least you can get away with. So I've let that cool and the embossing powder should be set and I can just brush over that with this microfiber cloth to get that pigment powder off. And there I have a, and it's quite shimmery because the luscious powders have shimmer in them. A lovely heat emboss sentiment in green without using green embossing powder. So pigment powders I think are a good investment because you can do so much with them. You can uh, use them dry, spread them on something sticky so they grab 
to that you can use them as paints you can mix a bit with some water and paint things on splatter things on you can mix it with modeling paste you can mix it with clear gesso and you can make embossing powders so a whole variety of ideas of things that you can do with those i tell you what let me know in the comments which uh, pigment powders you have and if you'd like me to do a specific say mini series on how to get the most out of your pigment powders so yeah let me know in the comments and there we have colored embossing without colored embossing powders and i think this does save money because the products that i'm using are multi-use i can get lots of other uses out of my pigment powders and i can obviously get lots of other uses out of my inks while I'm here, this is number four, the fourth thing that I'm not going to spend money on ever again, and that is shimmer sprays. Because with pigment powders, I can make my own, so they're even more versatile than I already <laughs> mentioned. This is a little travel size sprayer, which I picked up quite cheaply from one of the uh, you know low cost shops that we've got here in the UK. And I've got a number of these. And all I did was add some water about a third of the way up and then a little spatula of pigment powder, tighten it up, give it a good shake. And every time I want to use it, I give it a good shake and then I can spritz it onto some paper so I can make my own shimmer sprays. When that dries, that will be beautiful. Now, somebody gave me a good tip the other day. When you want to... Uh, put your shimmer sprays away, turn them upside down, give them a few sprays to clear the nozzle and then you shouldn't get, give it a wipe as well, shouldn't get any uh, stickiness there that bungs up your nozzle. So I'm going to give that a go and see how we get on. I do have some shimmer sprays in my stash. This is a Lindy's Stamp Gown Moon Shadow Mist and I must have had this for about six years, I think. And there is a little bit left in the bottom and I still use this mainly for splattering. It doesn't spray anymore. So sometimes I splatter with this if I'm doing something vintagey. And this one is a Cosmic Shimmer Airless Mister in pearlescent something or the other. I don't know what color it is. Uh, Copper Blaze. And this is lovely, but you know, I'm not gonna buy any replacements for these because I can make my own using my pigment powders. You can do that with brushes as well if you don't want them to shimmer and you just want a coloured spray, get a pigment powder that hasn't got any uh, mica in it. One thing to note with homemade shimmer sprays is that they won't have any growth inhibitor in them for stopping mould and bacteria growing. Uh, so only make up a small amount at a time, the kind that you'll use in a couple of weeks probably. If you use cooled boiled water or distilled water, you'll probably uh, get a bit more life out of them. They'll last longer before you see any mould growth. But unless you're using a perfectly sterile spray bottle and um, working in a sterile environment, you, you, know, you will get some mould growth eventually. So only create small amounts and then you can... Uh, wash out your bottle when you get to the bottom of it and start again and there's a lovely hopefully you can see a bit of shimmer on this card number five on my list is alpha stickers alphabet and number stickers so when i was doing lots of scrapbooking i'd often buy thickers which are i think the american crafts brand of alphabet stickers that have got some dimension to them but i don't use them anymore because i have invested in a lot of alphabet dies now you i'm sure you don't need as many as i have um but i have been collecting collecting these over a few years and when i see them in charity shops and whatnot or from my favorite shops on etsy i will get them because they are an investment that pays back over and over and over and over again time and time again so as i say i do have a lot of these <laughs> but i use them i use them on my cards i use them in my journaling i use them in my scrapbooking numbers and alphabets as well as sentiment dies but if you want to make them thicker if you want to create thickers then let's choose a nice one one way to do that 
is to add some dimensional foam onto the back of your letters. So I'm going to ink up this piece of paper with whatever picked raspberry is left on my brush. I'm going to pop this on. Hang on, where's my scissors? Let's chop that bit off because we don't need it. And pop that off. I'm going to pop that in the corner. Just make sure I've actually got a sticky patch. This is quite old, this foam. Pop that on there. So this is double-sided sticky foam. Some of it's a little less sticky than I'd like. And I can cut my letters with my die cutting machine. I will add a shim because it's trying to cut through card and foam at the same time. So that little bit of extra cardboard will give it a bit more pressure. And hopefully that's cut all the way through. Got a bit of card here. Take my dies off. And I can add my homemade thickers to, let me get the backing off to my card front. And then we have some dimensional letters. I hope you can see there that they've got a bit of dimension to them. If you haven't got any foam, or you don't want to use foam, you can just stack your die cuts to get chunky letters. So I'm gonna cut three of these. And I've got some tacky glue that I'm just gonna spread out with my glue spreader. And I'm gonna take the bottom one and press it face down into the glue and then pop this one on top and I can knock it together with my tweezers and I'm going to place that face down and then I'm going to make sure my tweezers are clean so I don't mess up the ink pick up that one pop it on top knock it together with my tweezers. The reason I do it bottom up as it were, put the white die cuts face down is so that I'm not putting the pink die cut in the glue and that just minimizes the chances of it being uh, mucked up by the glue. And then I take some deli paper, it's just waxed paper that won't stick to my letters, even if it gets glue on it, and just give it a good press down. And there I have a letter Y, which is three die cuts deep. And of course you can do more than three. Now I can pop that in there because it's not going to get on the, the Y, the top Y, and press that down. So you can do it either way. You could use craft foam and you could use layering of die cuts. This is obviously quicker. And again, this has become a bit of a recurring theme. You can match your homemade thickers to the inks that you're using in the rest of your projects. And number six, the last one on my list of things that I won't be buying again for card making is patterned paper. Now I do have a modest stash of shop-bought patterned paper, but I use that mostly in my scrapbooking and journaling. I keep a traveler's notebook that I do um, journaling in and I create pages using pattern paper which I enjoy very much but I don't use pattern paper in my card making mainly because I absolutely love creating mixed media pieces and that is what I do this is my pouch of pretties which you may have seen before and these are leftover scraps experiments things that didn't make it onto a card um, yeah and I, I can pull from this if I haven't got time to do any mixed media. So keeping a, a set of scraps that you can use is a great way of quick card making. But making my own mixed media papers, my own patterned papers, is a, a real joy to me and something I love to do. So as I say, I don't buy pattern papers for card making. I've absolutely nothing against it, don't get me wrong, nothing against cards made with pattern paper. 
I think they're beautiful, just as beautiful as ones made with mixed media pieces. But my personal preference is to do mixed media and I won't buy pattern paper for card making again. So that's it, a list of six things that I won't be buying for card making again, with the exception that if I see something in a charity shop or a secondhand shop, I might buy it if it's reasonably priced. And if there's something that is specialty, like, I don't know, some kind of enamel dots that I can't make myself at home, I might buy those. But that is it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of ways that you can make the most of your stash and stop buying things that you don't need so that you can spend less and craft more. If it has, do leave a thumbs up. Do check out my playlist of spend less craft more videos. And if you want to see more from me, do subscribe and I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.